Welcome back, fellow armchair generals. This is Gamer1745 here, and we're going to continue our invasion of the Soviet Union and push, push, push. They, the Finns are having a bit of trouble. Um, so are we. Um, but there's good, good things going on, too, with our you know, invasions in certain areas. So we're going to continue... Oh, finally. Finally got the last bit of this. Okay. And you can reorganize on the move. You just come somewhere here in the east eventually will use you just as some more occupation forces. Yeah, so our experiment of trying to get the Romanians to move, they are moving, getting the Hungarians, but we'll see whether they're useful. That's part of the thing. Are they useful? Not so much do they move into the territory, but do they do things that look like they're going to make things get better for us. That, to me, is the real key. Could we win here? Yes, okay, we have our airborne division. We're going to because not that we're doing too bad here, um, especially seeing as that division, but we're going to attack. Okay, we just had a division shatter. Okay, they just stopped being attacked. And we're going to stop attacking. The point was just to, okay, well, we took out some submarines. And then we're pushing here, good. And yes, well, we lost. No, we, we attacked, but we got them to stop attacking. Uh, this is a bit frustrating. Probably attacking somewhere in here. I wish they just... There's a lot of creep that's gone on in Black Ice. But yeah, I don't know. Ah, oh, you should be attacking. And you. Should get there, help crush that. What do you offer again? Okay. Um, partially my own thought, partially also, um, I think the sort of strategic author, Bev Bevan Alexander, which TIK thinks doesn't pay enough attention to logistics, but we have secured all of the Mediterranean, but, well, basically all the Mediterranean, but um, Gibraltar. I mean, that is still a little bit of a thing. So we no longer have to worry about naval invasions in this part of the world and we were also able to secure a path to invade up through iran which iran is in the war right now as our ally we we had to end up um invading um well okay um we ended up having to invade iran even though we got them into the axis and twice you can look at the video they switch over to the allies i don't know why I don't know if it's an event, don't know what was up, but when we invaded with the um, goal of puppeting them, I did so with the least amount of damage I could do to their forces to make them as strong an ally as I could. I wanted to, like I said, I actually did get them into the Axis via, you know, influencing them and whatnot. That's what I wanted to do. Turkey is coded not 
to join any faction. If it starts to get too close to a faction, one of these factions, it will start moving in another direction itself. It will influence itself away from that. Same with like Tibet, same with Sweden, same with Ireland, um, and Switzerland, wherever Switzerland is in on this map. Um, that's probably hiding under somewhere. Switzerland. Oh, well, we conquered Switzerland. That's right. Switzerland. So it's not on there, but on the thing. So it's coded not to come into the nation. So <clears throat> I don't need to occupy it. It doesn't really offer me much in the way of resources. Some Chrome. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it just would have been another hassle to conquer it. And I can't get it in diplomatically. So I just ignored it and went around it. Yeah, you, I could have, but it just would have taken time. Um, and so I wanted to secure the Mediterranean. I'm not sure, but late in 42, I think it's around November, is when the historical, um, and so it's probably around then, the historic, the scripted invasion of North Africa. I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure it won't happen if I control Gibraltar. I don't know if it will happen under these conditions. Um, I am hopeful that by Italy, not, I mean, they are messing around in, you know, down in sub-Saharan Africa. By Italy having a lot of forces here, it won't take a lot. And I do have a bunch of forces here that I tried to invade Gibraltar with that can be rushed down to help fight they're not great to fight American armor divisions, obviously, but um, forces to try to close off the Mediterranean and do that. And so securing all that needed to, um, yeah, torch needed to um, delay the forces coming, you know, ready to go 41. Let's support that attack. They're not that near crushing them. Damn. Um, I've got lots of rares. So, yeah, I'm doing okay, I think, with rares. Okay, light armor designs have advanced. Very good. Grayed out. So let's come down here and let's do like a nice breakthrough. Haiti. Oh, if we can get Haiti as our allies. Um, okay, another light division. The Afri Ooh, the Africa Corps won in Grozny. We just lost our Grozny defense. Damn. Now this is the light division down there is part of the problem, but... Which means they're going to come here which means we're going to have to stop attacking here. Stop me a major defeat. Uh, we just no longer attacking. You come into there. And they pushed a little too hard for us. I think we need to change the direction of our movement, even though we are in, we're still pushing here. But if you research even one year ahead, there is a massive penalty. I just found out a week ago. Well, there is a penalty researching ahead. Um, 
it's not too terrible to research a 43 and a 42. Um, but if it's definitely a 44, it's really bad. Um, I do research ahead on some things, but it's only, oh, we could do a 7th Division upgrade, Panzer Division. Where is the 7th? Where is the 7th Division? What's it currently doing? I mean, it's probably, when it says that, it means it's not in, in combat right, right this moment. But where is the seventh division? But do I want to pull it out of the line here? Where's the tenth? Okay, well, we got that port there, which. And you're following on and coming to here. You were going to be stupid and come down this way. And hopefully be able to take that port before we get cut off. Is the seventh way out here? Yeah, here. Um, yeah, oh, yeah, Rommel's old unit's out here. Where, um, yeah, no, I'm not sending this unit back to Germany. I need it too badly here. Did you take... No, we're not doing any nuclear um, development here. I I hadn't planned on getting this deep into this campaign before needing to test something more. Um, and mostly I'm just playing this because everybody wants to see me play um, uh, Barbarossa. I'm really much more interested in testing TRE now that I've developed a lot of stuff for it. Um, you can support that attack. You need to garrison that. You can keep moving to through there. You can get move to there. Um, yeah, I'm more interested in, in doing some more other work other testing than this quite honestly but i under totally understand people well hey we watched you play 1936 already we don't need to you know it's boring and because i think it's boring to constantly replay the the year two but um i need to test it over and over you're just being bombed you move up to there Okay, well, what we should do, again, I wish I was playing, okay, stop naval striking. Um, you move up to, well, there's already too many air units there for repair use. You can come to here, I guess. We need to move forward some of our forces. Yeah, I get really sick of playing 1936, guys. I play way too much testing things out. That's where we just moved. Okay, let's move you to here. We'll get some air fighters, at least. Better um, coverage. Further deeper, hopefully with some supplies. Cancel. Where do we have supplies? Okay, here. Because this series really is about me testing this more than anything else. Okay, beam slam. Yeah, well, it's it's coming. I'm working. Well, this is even technically working on it now because I'm seeing if how things are going. You know, if some something has surprised me that I need to change. Um, but yeah, um, we're doing this. Do you make specialized heavy armor divisions for taking cities? Um, 
Well, I haven't now uh, heavy armor. Um, I have made specialty armor, heavy armor divisions in the past. I do have units like this with some heavy artillery and whatnot in them. Um, I'm much less likely to do so now that they are seven brigades, though the, 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 big, the big thing that's right now delaying TRE coming out is going back to the eight brigade division. Now, I've already got a working thing that when you come here, you have eight brigades here and you got, but I need to redo some of the um, stuff. And I've gone in with the help of DSAFE, one of the main current de devs for Black Ice. He's been very helpful. I complain about the Black Ice team. I love the Black Ice team. The Black Ice team, to one degree or another, helps me a lot. Okay? Um, like DSAFE has been very helpful, giving me some code to the um, Lua code the Lua, um, you know, the AI um, coding, um, so that the U.S. and Britain will make eight brigade divisions because that's what they did historically. We're still on the fence about Japan making eight brigade divisions because they didn't use a lot of support brigades. They had very large div infantry divisions. Generally, their primary infantry divisions have, you know, two brigades of infantry, or whatever, pretty strong, and a full brigade of cavalry. Not We're not talking about a cavalry division. We're talking about an infantry division. And mo for the most part, their armored divisions are just simply armored attached to an infantry unit. It's not like an all-motor, mo for the most part. And none were permanently through the war that were like fully motorized um, armored divisions that I know of. For Japan. I, and I'm not the greatest expert on Japan, so, you know, it just from my quick readings. They were mostly just adding a tank battalion or maybe two to an otherwise foot infantry unit or adding, you know, a motorized infantry battalion to a, um, you know, infantry division just for, you know, tactical mobility, not strategic mobility. Um, so I'm not sure what I'm doing about Japan, but, you know, the Soviet Union and Italy particularly, and I'm only really worrying about majors. Soviet Union and Italy particularly had weak divisions, and I'm not really that concerned about France because they're going to collapse anyways. And the player will be able, whatever country he plays, he'll be able to make eight brigade divisions. You know, so if he's playing as Romania and he wants to, you know, have an eight brigade divisions guarding their border with the Soviet Union, and you know, instead of having a lot of divisions, have fewer but better, the player can make that choice, giving that choice to the player. And so... Um, and so I'm doing the, the AI coding. I'm going getting the old OOBs that had event OOBs to eight brigades and adding them sort of in, and that's all taking time. And so I'm working on things. And I'm, you know, I'm doing stuff. So that's doing this. It would make um, TRA branch rather than submod. Uh, to some degree, it is still a submod. I'm still leeching off of black ice, and I still requires black ice. But what I would be best described as a, instead of an events submod, it is now coming to be more gamers remix of Black Ice and plus all my event mods. Where before it was only, you know, like I had a, four, uh, you know, the Goering's four-year program in my TRE, eventually a four-year program, decent but more, you know, cookie-cutter basic version of it was added to Black Ice. Well, I've always gone in and removed um, the Black Ice version because I didn't want two four-year, you know, double bonuses, if you will, for the four-year program. So, you know, I've always done a little bit of editing of Black Ice, but mostly just where there was direct conflicts. But now it's more of a... Um, more of a remix and they push me to it with the eight brigade is what really pushed me to it so i'm opening up to a little bit more remix but it's still 90 plus percent exactly what black ice has given to you you know four things i am not repeat not touching 
basically any of these technologies. Just temporarily, I did touch that just to re-add back in the 8th Brigade, but I'm going to create a an unresearchable hidden tech that will be fired, that you'll get the... the um, the stuff through a decision so it'll be a, a, a non because there are already a few hidden texts that you don't research but a you know decision or, or an event gives the research bonus to it so but i'm not do, dealing with any of this these type of changes in here um you know to the text well i guess the only thing is is i've moved some of the construction costs that once you get the you're not for the text but for the you know the event later on moved it from being uh, money and supplies to just supplies but increased the supplies a lot plus on some of the you know giant infrastructure and giant architecture um, uh, event options so it's still costly and costs a lot more in supplies but doesn't cost you in um, you know money in international money trading or much because i went down like from two two thousand gold or whatever you want to call it to just 200 it was normally just you get 10 percent of the cost so i have done some of that but i haven't really touched the actual any of these actual texts so so much of it is still you know 90 plus percent is still black ice it's just the five or ten percent that i'm sort of touching remixing um so yeah and so i am redoing the cost on some of these upgrades for divisions like the seventh um i think they're not entirely wrong and i gave a talk earlier i guess you weren't here road manor um i guess that's how you pronounce that name um about how my philosophy and how much we are i am touching you i don't want you to be stuck here fighting i want you to move 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 it move it move it and you come up and attack then once you get through there um so it's it's something of a remix now he's touching you yeah so yeah and so that's that kind of thing so i i, I you know the black ice team like i say d safe has been giving me actually good coding examples so that i'm able to go in it well um what i'm going to do is um cheat more money in because i disagree with this um and i've changed the money the way the money is used quite a bit um and i've gotten rid of all of the um need to pay your troops or no maybe that's something i still need to deal with a little bit but um getting rid of all of the gold you need gold to pay your troops or you need gold, you get penalties for having not enough in the bank um all that's going away with tre because I, I look at money as purely an international exchange medium in this game, not a domestic thing. So yeah, this all this all cheat. Um, because now one thing I have not done is ever done any of the in this in this playthrough I've not done any of the trades for any of these. These are purely by either conquest or my allies possessing. You know, uh, either domestically or my allies, possess, you know, actual fra faction allies possessing these things. I've not done any trades, and I've removed the trading function. But, well, it's still there, but I just make it not fire. Now, somebody can make a sub mod to TRE and make undo it, and I'll tell somebody how to do it. Pretty damn easy. Just a, a few lines of code, just change it. I mean, literally, just a, you know, two lines of code, and you'd have the changing back um, if you want it. You know, so if somebody wants to make a sub mod to TRE, not make their own thing, but just make a uh, something that's a little bit of a sub mod, they can do it, and I'll help somebody if that's what they want to do. But um, yeah, that's sort of everything. Yeah, I I agree about the idea of, but we can't deal with the negative modifiers. Uh, it's just something that. Turn them to spies and stuff. It looks like you cut down on the number of diplomats. It's a huge number. Oh, well, my... Oh, yeah. Okay, you're right. You're right. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm not paying good enough attention. Okay. Um, well, currently we have more than 110%. Uh, the only sh there's only 
this number is the effective maximum number. You're going to have higher than than 110 percent officers. It just this shows the. Um, you go to effect a maximum. It used to be, what, 120 or something in standard Hoi 4, but the AI will stop doing officers once it hits 100, so it was thought to be too much of a player bonus. But you can have more, and you can figure out how many they need and do the math here. But you can have more, it's just they're not, they're just sitting around in, in an office somewhere, you know, playing um, cards or something until they're needed, and then they come in and fill the gaps. Um, so, but it's 110 max, it's over is not lost. Okay, let's, yeah, let's get rid of all diplomats. And we'll move them over to spies for at least a little while, because I don't know that I need more research. 140? Yeah, okay. And it's just sort of a, a, a player buff. You might be able to edit the AI to get it to to go higher. I don't know. But I know they stop. It stops at 100. Just so long since I've played. Standard Boy 3. I have no intention of ever going back to standard Hoi 3. I'm waiting for fuel. It even says you have fuel there. Yep, we've lost Grozny. You're counterattacking. Once you go black, you don't go back yet. Yeah, no, I, I have no intention of ever going back to playing that again in my life. I mean, not that, it, you know, if somebody wants to pay me money or something, I would do it. But just to do it, to do it, no. I, I am done with that. I think we need you up here more. Yeah, it's not that I would refuse to do it. It's just I, uh, I will not... Yeah, just because I feel like it ever do it again. I might theoretically try some other the the you know historically plausible mod or some other things that could happen, but I have no plans on it. But definitely not pure standard. Stalino, we've won. Good. Now you're going to push up into there. Good. Sure thing, Road Manor. Um, hope you follow the Twitch channel and or YouTube. Subscribe over there. Just don't recognize your name from other streams. Maybe you were here. I just... Forgot you were sorry if I did. Um, yeah. Well, okay. Conclusions after victory, great. Um, here's the thing about some of the you know later scenarios. If all you're doing is like the 1944 scenario or something like that, if all you're, you know, and playing as, well, if you're playing as America or something, I think it'd be stupid to play that scenario because, um, yeah, you're just, you know, kicking Germany while he's on the ground kind of thing. You know, why, why play that? So presumably you're playing that uh, 1944 scenario or something as the axis. Okay. Well, if you're able to do anything in a 1944 scenario other than by a marginal amount delay Germany's defeat, like, yeah, made Berlin hold out for two days longer than it did historically, or, you know, a month longer than historically. If you're doing anything more than that, the game is broken. Because there is no practical way. You know, I know, um, you know, D Day is, you know, June 4th, 1944. So, you know, I don't know the exact start date. I never played it or something like that. But it's too late. 
there's, you know, maybe if you know the AI is going to invade right, you know, in Normandy, and that's the only place it's going to invade, and you move all your bunch of panzers there, but even with a Soviet joint, it's too late. The game, the game is won, you know, if you're starting from a historical scenario in 1944. So to me, the only two scenarios that have any real validity to want to play, unless the game is broken, it's too easy to play for Germany or whatever to play, or Japan. It, well, okay, there's three, I guess. 1936, which deals with the buildup and development of Germany and Japan and Italy, and, and also the development of the Allies to react against it. That's one good one. 1939, the start of the war in Europe, is starting what is the historical start. Is This is what Germany and what Italy and whatever whoever had at that date, as best we can do it, and go. And that's a great start. And then I guess four would be if you want to play as Japan and start, you know, attack Pearl Harbor, go, you know, in 1941. Or you, know, you got to, you know, get a little prepared, but go. Those are the only historic, and then how long can you hold out as Japan, or can you take India as Japan, or at that start date? Those are the only scenarios that, and only reasons I would have to play other than a 36. Otherwise, I personally have no interest. Never done them, went straight for Black Ice. Well, I didn't go straight for Black Ice, but it took me a while to find it. Uh, the Gata Damaron uh, DLC, I played that for quite a while. That was actually pretty good um, for what it was. We won here. Good. You've won. You're getting reinforcements. Good. Okay. You can come down here. So some things are just, you know, if if you can do them in a game, you know, just it's too late. I know enough about World War II that that just means it's broken. Whether it's a bad AI or just coding in such a way that, yeah, we can build enough whatever to turn it around and, you know... You can look at some of the stuff, 42 or whatever. Yeah. I still think it's too late. Yeah, I... Forty-one. The start of 41 is the last... In my opinion, the last chance at a game like this that Germany, the Axis, whatever, 41 would be because that gives you the, the start. Okay, you've, you've already conquered France. And maybe you do the, the historical thing was is once France falls, a lot of production either stops or massively slows down in Germany for two reasons. One, hey, the war's sort of over. Yeah, yeah, we're having submarines out in, you know, in Britain. And yeah, yeah, we're still doing an air war with Britain. But the war's mostly won, so we don't need. Now, they don't tell, they can't tell everyone that we're getting ready to go to the war with the Soviet Union. But so the war is mostly done, so they, they stop producing some of the stuff. So you don't need us so much of it, because the war is mostly over. That's part of the reason. The other part is, is, hey, you know, the next war... We don't want old Panzer twos, you know. Make it. Don't make any. Of course, you should stop making Panzer ones by long before forty one. But um, we don't need any more Panzer twos, you know. Look, you know they were and they highly modified things that are hardly a Panzer two anymore. We still call it that sort of late, you know the 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 Panzer two Loesch, which really is all. Uh, Almost all new design, you know, new road wheels, new engines, new, new just about everything. Um, you know, reconnaissance tank, but just vaguely a Panzer II. But they keep making the Martyr IIs. 
So, you know, there's reasons to, you know, maybe stop making Panzer twos, but make other, you know, and also the Wasp, the, you know, the self-propelled 105 millimeter howitzer gun. You know, there, there's things that could be made effectively, usefully on the Panzer II chassis up until the end of the war. Um, but they, you know, but they, you know, stop Panzer II because we don't need any more of those. In the next war, in a few years, we're going to need, you know, improved Panzer threes or improved Panzer fours. And so, yeah, stop making those old Panzer threes and those old Panzer fours because we don't, or slow down. Some of it's just slow down. Slow down, either slowing down or stopping production. Because yeah, we're gonna when we when we actually want to build the new better things, when they really should be cranking out every damn last Panzer II, Panzer III, Panzer IV, 38T, or modification, you know, stugs or whatever modifications thereof, um, you know, like the Martyr threes or whatever, um, cranking out as damn as many as they can of those models. They don't. They they either stop or slow production. In you know after you know mid late 1940, and don't really start ramping it up until the actual invasion of the Soviet Union starts, and that's only starting to ramp it up, and they really don't hit really hard until the you know 42 and the the, the counterattack you know the winter counterattack uh, pushes them back from Moscow. And that's only when they start to get, you know, um, tote as um, a centrally organized armaments minister. Because before then, you don't really have a single guy doing armaments, you know, armaments and, and munitions production. You have the four-year plan. You have all these different, and, you know, the shell plan and all these different sort of plans all ring. Nothing centrally organized. And it's only when tote comes in as they're really an armaments minister. Then, of course, he dies in the plane crash and Speer takes over from tote and it's really only that getting ramped up that germany really starts to ramp up its production in a big sense uh, oh no i say pretty quick good um so yeah um so 41 is the last sort of you know because say okay well there but you know do we invade you know you know, starting 41, not necessarily do we, you know, the day of the invasion of the Soviet Union, but do we invade the Soviet Union or do we do a Mediterranean or do we just, you know, what do we do? You know, that's the last real choice, in my opinion, the beginning of 41, that you really have a um, change in the outcome because. Germany did not lose the war because it lost Stalingrad. Stalingrad is just a symptom. It isn't like, oh, well, hey, had they taken Stalingrad early enough and pushed into the Caucasus oil, Germany would have won. No, the U.S. would have come in and crushed them anyways. Um, you know, you really had to be doing more than, you know, not just the Caucasus oil. Now, if you had taken the Caucasus oils, taken Stalingrad, taken Leningrad, taken Moscow, and, you know, it's a, you know, Soviet Union holding out in, you know, not necessarily right at the Urals, but holding out somewhere deep in here, man, maybe Germany could win. And it's also, if they didn't lose because the, you know, because um, there's about as many, um, well, maybe the whole North Africa campaign, the North Africa campaign, including lost at, you know, Tunisia here, is about the same that's lost at um, Stalingrad. Now, there's a lot more Italians here. There were Italians lost at Stalingrad. Um, at least, uh, was it a couple of cores or something? I forget exactly. But um, most of the Italian... Um, Expeditionary course core was in the ball um, in the Caucasus, so it gets lost slash mangled. But you know, so it, it isn't the you know tactical losses in Tunisia that caused Germany's defeat that they would have otherwise won. No, it's just the industrial might that America is able to come to bear. That so long as you don't fuck it up too badly, they're going to win. So the choices have to happen soon. It has to happen effectively something earlier to um, change the outcome. So yeah, so that's just my idea that any war game that, you know, you, it can be a legit war game that you want to play that is a um, 
well, can we do it faster? Can we hold out longer? You know, can we hold out an extra four, four months or something like that? And yeah, okay. That may be a real thing, but. Okay, a bunch of events just happened. Let's see. Um, well, what do we want to do first? Let's do the um, brigade. Let's do the text first. Brigade command structure. Um, okay, that's grayed out. Machine gun focus. That's aircraft. We want to stop that. Mexico. Okay, they're coming in the war. Now we're done for. Good, we're pushing there. That's good. Well, that's wrong. Yeah, this. See, this never happened in Germany. Never happened. That's why I don't like these events. Maybe bombing would lose infrastructure in Frankfurt unmanned, but even at the last days of the war. Eh, this shouldn't be happening. I gotta make sure the run on, I gotta make sure these disappear. With TRE. I got disgruntled citizens. All this got to disappear. Now, if you want to, you know, there's, and they sort of did, oh, well, here's why there's the coal thief, because TIK, and I don't know if the guy um, actually watched the thing, that there's sort of a, a gay, Germany, and just to summarize um, his talk, um, Germany had put, pushed out of the game, find the coal thief or something, because coal becomes at different stages during the war a rare commodity in Germany, and people need, particularly in winter, need it to heat your homes and also cook with it and whatnot. Well, there was no coal thief. It was just mismanagement, not of coal production so much, but of railways and getting coals from the coal mines to where it needs to go. They had problems with railway management. Um, though it's actually, the Reichsbahn is actually one of the better working things in Nazi Germany, though they did have problems with it. And TIK goes into some of it. So yeah, they have the, you know, vent people stealing coal. Well, that really wasn't happening. So yeah, um, you need to tie it to some real historical thing for me to want to have it happen. Okay, free willing battalion, yes, Finns, good. Uh, Ukrainian Liberation Army, we gain so support. So not so much we're gaining any more units, but 50 manpower, and we could use 50 manpower. Nice, Himmler demands a Panzer Force. Okay, I guess we're just going to create um, Panzers. Great. Again, we need to, okay, we're getting rid of these things. Agricultural industry, yes. See here, this is the type of thing here that I just lose 500 money. Where, where are they buying tractors from internationally during the middle of the war? They're not. They don't cost money. They cost supplies. So supplies, that makes, well, you, oh, this is actually gaining, oh, well, this is, uh, uh, don't know why we would gain from industrialization. Farm, yes, because farm, you know, industrializing farm means less manpower needed on the farms, and then go be soldiers. That makes perfect sense. Gaining supplies, I don't get that so much. Should, if anything, cost you supplies. Uh, let's see the plans, new monumental architecture, German occupation, the East conquer them all, puppets of Russian states. Oh, I have thought this already happened. I don't know. New Panzer Corps, fine. Government repression. We don't. I'm going to cheat in the money. You're going to cheat in the money. You're going to cheat in the money. So having this down is not going to be a problem. So this used to, I think, need more supplies. And I'm, I'm going, I'm going back to this one needing more supplies. You know, or re reducing the supply production percentage or something. Not money. Supplies, not money. Installation of searchlights. Fine. Fall of Singapore. Britain gains a bunch of dissent and loses national unity. Uh, 
So yeah, uh, that's just my again my thoughts. Costs and domestic costs and supplies. And so if you're having an, an event that you think you needed to, oh I don't know, import some specials tungsten from um, Sweden, which is really it was iron ore with a natural mix of tungsten, um, not so much tungsten independently, but. Um, yeah, that's what, and you you need to maybe simulate buying that from Sweden. Well, okay, then 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 you you got me. I, I'm willing to go there with you for money, or if you showed me how they were spending money buying it from Spain, which they bought tungsten from Spain and Portugal. Um, well, then okay, yeah, you know, or something like now. Now we already do have. You know the ability to um, buy rare materials from Spain and Portugal but I mean if you're having an event that you know gives you a bunch of you know big pile of rare materials because we don't have really tungsten here I you know again I don't strategic resources these things which was zinc and manganese and tungsten more from tungsten um, Old, older name for this thing they're now aligned close enough that they give us to it here so I don't believe in that but if it's just the rare materials and you go oh big pile of rare materials show up and you want to cost charge me money yeah fine or just do the sort of in-game mechanic that works either way works with me or both combination of both that also works with me but it needs to be that for money to be a thing well what else are we going to you know, like these 1943 technologies, I'll agree that they're not the most efficient to do now, but I want to push them, and it would be better to maybe stop some of them and do some of the earlier technologies now. But um, mostly we have the 42s fully doing. We have enough officers, I think. Enough, to, enough for the moment, but we could have large losses, um, and it could be be a problem, but I think enough. And we obviously have enough diplomats, and we've, we've shifted over to more spies, so yeah, might as well research some 43 techs like high-velocity guns and see if we can get them a little early. Okay, that's sort of on again, off again battles. Okay, we're going to stop attacking that. It's just a little too... Bridge too far. Let's see if you can go up to there. We got... They're coming... They're going to be defending there. We're coming up to defend. We'll move these guys because these guys should be a little bit faster. Let's move the Jaegers up to the forests. Well, we've won there, but the Finns have not really felt like coming in, helping out a. Oh, division shattered, damn. An ally. Okay, you've got to stop or you're going to have problems soon, too soon. And, but we'll let that continue. They're coming down. Oh, oh what the hell? They somehow draw plans? No, no, no. No, oh, no. Okay, you're there. How did I send... I don't know how that happened. You come to there. Mm. 
Moving divisions shatter. I wish they just lose organization. And it's, I really like a lot of the black ice. I'm not going to get into to changing this just because it's just too much to do. But um, I like a lot of the idea of all the different um, uh, doctrines and things that improve morale, that improve organization. I like all of them. What, because a lot of these, not all of them, but a lot of these are shattering on attack. So they're maintaining their organization while they're grinding their men down to nothing. I wish they would just, I don't know, how do I say it? Make it so that all the, they, I like the way that they step up and you, you incrementally increase these. I, what I don't like in Hearts of Iron 4 is, you know, oh, do you have elastic defense? Yes or no. If you do, you get bonuses. If you don't, you don't. Where here, this is increasing, you know, elastic defense, counterattack, and whatever uh, is direct fire, sort of a different thing for, um, you, you know, uh, over, you know, direct fire units, I think. But so, you know, is counterattack, you know, this is one of the battle tactics here. We don't obviously, I just, I don't pay too much attention to them because we don't get a chance to like pick what happened here. But, you know, defend reckless assault or elastic defense, it's all these different little um, things that are happening in battle and how effectively you get to do them. You know, um, so. I like it. I think it's good. I think this is better than than Hearts of Iron 4 is a yes or no thing. Can you do it or not? I, I like that it incrementally, incrementally, incrementally gets more and more. But I think they've done too much of it. Maybe not so much these doctrines, but maybe it's more, maybe it's more of these, you know, organization up, organization up. It's too much and... So instead of like 32% organization up, maybe it should be, you know, all, you know, current, you know, this current level, maybe it should be 15%, you know, but still, you know, just make the increases smaller so that you don't get, you know, samurai charges that are, you know, super, super units that, yeah, Japan, that might be historically proper, but not for most other nations. At least that's just my thought. Again, I don't want to... I, I'm not going to go in and remix all of that, but um, it just seems... It, it's a good idea that maybe just taken a little bit too far. Okay, wow, we finally pushed them one here. Let's push it into there. Get you guys to come up and hold the line. Okay, um, keep coming through here because I don't want you to give up your, your um, progress. You're going to hold the raw stuff, so we're holding that. No, you don't need to go that way. You can go this way. I want to strategically deploy you because we don't have fuel for you. Uh, keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay, major defeat somewhere, uprising, oh shit, well, low resistance, France, swine, okay, well, we'll deal with that. Um, military forces, very good, I think that may be there. Okay, let's just cancel all the, close all of these things up, uprising, we'll deal with those in a moment. Looks like we have a uprising all over France. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do anything about this, but this seems like an awfully big uprising for... Uh, 
Yeah, this is all wrong. Maybe I'll go in and deal with that. All these units are now in combat because of this. Okay, I've got to go in and look and see what's going on here. This this is all wrong. All wrong. This is screwy. This should not be happening. What are you thinking, guys? Black Ice people. Um, and I don't I gotta look at the code and see what they're what they're doing, but this should not happen. Should not happen unless or so long as Vichy France exists, this should not happen. Anything like this wide. Um, if you want to go revolt risk higher a little bit, because this is a scripted thing. This is all scripted. This isn't just revolt risk. Let's have a, you know, let's have a battle. Um, this is a scripted thing. And I don't know whether this is scripted to be because it's June 1942 or something like this. But so long as Vichy France has happened, and this is the whole, the whole thing. Uh, the whole reason Vichy France is formed, in essence, is like, hey, French people. French government, you do a deal with me. We'll leave all of this entirely, including like, um, you know, North Africa and other places, not so much Indochina or, yeah, um, that gets that gets to sort of go to Japan. But we'll leave the rest of the French Empire more or less independent. Um, so long as you don't cause trouble. And so the French police, they still get to be the police in Paris. The French mail system still get, you know, all the French civil government, throughout most all of France, still gets to function. And it'll be actually fully unoccupied in the Vichy part. You know, Vichy government is technically the government of all of France, but military occupation overrules any civilian whatever. You know, it's it's the it's the army. The army is governing France because, hey, you know, we're afraid of, uh, you know, British counter invasion or something. So, um, yeah, that makes sense. But so long as Vichy France exists, they aren't going to do anything like this. They, you know, revolt risk, you know, blow up a train, do this. The British are, you know, trying to get them to do little minor things. But so long as the... You basically maintain the peace. Vichy gets to exist. The only reason this breaks out in like 1944 is because Vichy no longer... I mean, technically Vichy is still around. More or less, Patan is gone from the government. It's run by Laval. But it's German. Germany occupies the rest of France. And, of course, they've lost... You know, the, the Allies have taken North Africa. Then... Um, yeah, a couple here and there that are sort of natural revolt risk. You know, if I haven't put enough SD or military police units around and totally ignored this, I agree. They're, they're, you know, like, oh, hey, you haven't, like, had any interior troops. You've just, you know, put some troops on the border to hold down, you know, or the coast. And, yeah, natural stuff I would agree with. This, and I would agree with this if this is in conjunction with, say, a 1944 whatever. You know, I would agree with this here. Okay, yeah, I don't know exactly what's going on, but yeah, I understand the railways. That's good. Yes, we'll pay this. Oh, gross. Yeah, we've lost these a while ago, but we'll lose that here. Well, let me save this now. So I've got to go. So this is why I'm playing this. I've got to go in and look at this stuff because, yes, I'm doing this as a remix more. Um, yeah, that's this. They're uprising in Paris. But did we yell yeah, here? Well, let's attach this to here. So why is this... And I don't know if, because there's a very similar naming organization that's set up as army control with GGA, you know, German, originally with German graphical augmentation, now it's just become German gameplay augmentation and German graphical 
two sort of separate sub mods, partially because of me and others um, complained to the shock to our eyes of you know, his color palette sense for some of these units. Um, are these all just sitting in Paris? Oh, good. Just what I needed. Them all sitting in Paris. Right. Oh, man. So, yeah, this, this is screwy. It's also happening in, in Germany, too. I mean, now I know this is Asas Lorraine, not... Oh, are we also battling here? Yeah. Um, you know, so this is sort of somewhat occupied... France, yes, but yeah, it's a little too much. You know, I can handle this. I've got enough armored divisions to move around here once they win this to um, go in and deal with all this. And I'm holding my, you know, I'm doing responsible things, but this is too much. So I, I got to go in and try to remember to look and see what the conditions to fire this are. Like I say, you know, allies control Britain. Germany doesn't control Moscow or something in the east. Um, you know, the reason, like, you got Britain has to, the allies have to control Britain is that they have to be supplying, you know, um, munitions and, and weapons to to the re the rebels, or otherwise, there's not they're not going to find enough you know, pitchforks to, to effectively do this, you know, machine guns or whatever to, to do this. They can get a few just people hid from government stores, but not enough to do this. It takes, you know, a lot of support to do this. And fine, you know, if Britain controls this, if it's maybe in 44, or if Germany has not, you know, has Vichy France is not, you know, still around, that kind of thing. Yeah, well, yeah, but this is yeah, this is but this is all scripted. So I don't know why. And like I say, I think this should be the because it's military, um, militar vert Walton in Frankish Reich. I think that means army. And okay, here's some army units. Field Jarm Okay, this this and I think there's a whole set of this stuff already for maybe 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 GA handles this already. Because there is, you know, these sort of military police I guess fascist militia is fine. It's just sort of the field gendarmerie, the, the sort of gives gives the, the police a little bit more fighting capability than just a um uh uh, what what you, um su suppression capability that a military police unit yeah so yeah for for the army so maybe GGA supersedes this so we'll see what's going on there but I think on that note we will end um this episode I want to thank you for getting this far and on any of these topics especially about like changing the game I want to hear your opinions. I was always quite surprised at how little pushback about somebody didn't tell me I got something wrong with TRE or it should be something cost more, cost less or whatever. And, you know, and, you know, make me explain myself because it doesn't mean I'm going to change it. But I do want to hear your opinions, including your opinions about Black Eyes, though. Maybe I'm not going to. I'm more I'm more likely to change my own mod than to change if I haven't already decided to change um black ice but you know if you think something like this should be happening in june 42 with vichy france in existence tell me why now i may go you're right and i'll agree or i may go yeah you're wrong i still think it should go away but i really like military department yeah okay well military department means military not police or not yeah police or ss because they're different now they were there too but yeah it's sort of maybe black eyes taking a shortcut so yeah please post below um love to hear your comments we'll be continuing more of this i don't know how far we're going to get before i really do need to do more testing of tre so it means starting over um we'll see um but probably some more of this um, 
but TRE is coming. I'm not going to give you any dates. So if you want to get up and start playing, play now. You want to wait, wait, and just be happy. It's going to take, whether it takes a week or it takes a year, I don't know. It's going to take what it takes. And, you know, might be less than a week, but I don't think so. I think it's going to be more than a week. I think it's going to be well more than a week. But I'm giving no no planned dates. I have no idea what it's, what it's going to take. It's going to take what it takes. No, no, you know, some things are looking close, and then I see this stuff, and I don't know. Um, so no, no, no schedule. It's going to take probably more than a week. I mean, it can't be done, you know, a proper, I may, may release a, hey, few people test this, but not like it's properly working. It's not going to happen within a week. I don't think it could happen practically sooner than that, but so more more times than that, but I don't know how long. So no no date set, but it's coming. It's being worked on. This is part of it. So you can look forward to it. Thanks, everyone. See you next time.